This is paragraph three, and this is all about claim number one. And that is about how the ballet school has rejected the child. Um, and they again talk in general about what that means to discriminate. And it tries to differentiate between racial, ethnic, and sexual discrimination and the kind of discrimination that is necessary part of doing business. So Ryan argues that um, that this discriminating is not discriminatory like this, but it's an everyday, ordinary stuff that's a necessary part of doing business. So that's claim number one and the support for it from the author of the critique. You can do the same thing. You could you could argue that the analogies that she uses for university and for modeling schools uh, don't work. Then you'd have to come up for a reason why they're not good analogies. Again, I'm not saying you have to come one down one way or the other with these, but this is what this author does. So this is paragraph number four, and it continues on with support for claim number one that the ballet school is correct. Now, this is simply a summary of that claim and some comments, some critique by the writer of, of the critique. For example, the writer says she maintains correctly, and that's the author's, the critique author's way of saying that they, she agrees with, or he agrees with the, the author, that the San Francisco Ballet, and here's the reason, like any other private institution, has the right to set standards. And then it goes on to say, rejection is part of life, it's just common sense sort of approach here. We are not created equal. Not everyone will be admitted or get a turn on the stage. This is what happens when you set standards. Some people will meet them, others won't. Then, the author notes that Ryan quotes a sp spokesperson about this very issue. And this is a great word, in, in other words, great phrase, in other words, here's where you get into the analogy that professional ballet school is like the university. They can reject applicants with body types just as universities can reject students with mental types. Uh, I'm not sure about this argument here. I don't know how much they know about ballet. It doesn't seem to be very um, sensible here. Um, anyway, this is, at some point, you're going to have to summarize what her claim is and whether you agree or disagree with it. Paragraph five, I think, um, makes the argument that, that it's not about the traditional forms of discrimination, like racism or religious affiliation. They're saying that, yes, that is discriminatory and wrong. But body type is something that, that everybody, rich or poor, black or white, Protestant or Jew, male or female, it could be termed an equal opportunity standard. So if it applies equally to everyone, it is discriminating and not discriminatory. This seems like a legalistic definition, but it is in support of her argument for claim number one. Remember, all these paragraphs are in support of claim number one. Summing them up, 
and coming up with reasons to agree.